In this clip, we're going to be adding glint to our robot. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the glint node. So I'll just hit tab and type in glint. And if I add glint, you know, kind of where we were talking about some, where some of these overall effects go, and I just drop it between my grain and my final merge, you see that it adds glint to basically everything. Um, and so if I kind of exaggerate that, you can see that really doesn't seem correct. The dog isn't going to have any glint on it, neither is the girl, but the robot, because it's a hard surface and it's kind of shiny, that's where we're going to see the most glint. So I'll just hit Control Z to undo that and show you where we need to add this glint node so that it only affects the robot, but it's in the correct placement in our pipeline. That's one of the most challenging things when learning Nuke is when you want to add something like this, well, where do I put it? So. I wouldn't want to add it after my motion blur because that means that the glint wouldn't be getting any kind of blur to it as the robot was moving. Um, now, there's a few different ways to kind of think about that. It sort of depends on the order of operations of the camera. Um, so it's kind of like a chicken and egg thing, which came first, the glint or the motion blur. Um, we're not going to be adding so much glint that we are really, really concerned as much about that. So my recommendation would be to add it right here before the motion blur and after the pre-mold. So right there. And what that's going to do is just add it here. And then if there is a little bit of motion blur with for, for the robot, it'll take care of that glint. Now, I think currently the ray length is way too much. You know, at 50, it's already feeling like a lot. So we may turn that down a bit. But I also don't like that it's directional, you know, right up and down. So I'm going to come in here and start to kind of rotate it a bit. Right there is actually great. in sort of the direction that that sun is coming from, you know, kind of up and to the right here. So with that glint rotated now, that feels a lot more natural. And then we can just, you know, cut the that length in half there right about, you know, 25 or so. And if I increase the number of rays, uh, you can see a different type of glint. I think two is nice, but just to show you, um, you can kind of get a different looking, almost sort of lens flare type of thing without having to do any tracking. It's just analyzing the luminance of the image. Um, so um, I'm going to keep that back down there at two because I think that that just is a little bit prettier. That's kind of more what I'm going for. And just to show you the... Uh, what kind of what that looks like with and without if I select the node and then hit the D key you can see how it just really pumps up those areas to make them extra bright and feel you know just that more much more like the sunshine's really coming through on that side so that's glint it's a pretty easy uh, little thing to add and really makes this uh, work well so let's keep talking about how we can add light in these types of ways um, for the next few lessons um, so let's add some more effects <laughs> 